Uh, next, we'd like to introduce you to Kalia Yang. Uh, she's actually a native of this neighborhood here, and uh, the site of her family home that she uh, grew up in is, is one of the sites that some of you are working on, right over this direction. Is that correct? 437 East York. And uh, she, uh, Kalia, is uh, now a professor at the University of Wisconsin at Eau Claire. Uh, she's also the author of a book. The, the Late Homecomer, a Mullen family memoir that some of you may know about. So we're very excited to have her back in St. Paul, her hometown, uh, and tell us something about her experiences and comments about Habitat. Please uh, join me in welcoming Clea. Hello. Um, my name is Noga Yaya, and I'm delighted to be here today. As a writer, um, as a Hmong writer coming from the Hmong community, very much as a Minnesota author, but also as an American writer contributing to world literature. It is a joy for me to be here today because I grew up in 437 East York Avenue, right up here, um, in a house that was full of lead. My little sister had lead poisoning. In a 900 square feet home with rotting walls, we were continually sick. 437 East York has a window that looks out at the world, and that's the window that my grandma set on set down by to watch me go to school and come back again because she believed that in America, education was the garden that I cultivated. Many, many years after, after the fact, but not so far from 437, we moved out of there in 2003 because the lead poisoning was getting out of control, because the house was falling apart around us. In schools, I learned about the American dream. It would take me a long time to see myself as a fabric within that dream. It's an honor to be here today because all of you fortify, fortify that, that dream for me, the life I live. 437 East York taught me something very, very important. I'm going to read a little bit from my book, just the, uh, just the epilogue at the beginning, or the prologue, um, an epigraph actually. In my culture, among, we believe that before babies are born, they live in the sky where they fly among the clouds. The sky is a happy place, and calling babies down to earth is not an easy thing to do. From the sky, babies can see the course of human lives. This is what the Hmong children of my generation are told by our mothers and fathers, by our grandmothers and grandfathers. They teach us that we have chosen our lives, that the people who we would become, we had inside of us from the beginning. And the people whose worlds we share, whose memories we hold strong inside of us, we have always known. From the sky, I would come again. The book begins this way because we were living at 437 East York, because I was a teenager and Titanic was in the theater. Because Christmas was toys for tots and Thanksgiving was meals on wheels. And my mom and dad worked the night shift to get the nominal increase in wage so that the roof could hold and the food, the rice, could be put on the table. And one day I went up to my father after school because I'd never been to a movie theater before and I wanted to see what the insides looked like because I was in love with Leonardo DiCaprio. And in a house without a VCR, without a CD player, um, we, had, we had Angel Hayman tonight every night at 6.30. And they had a special on Leo, so I wanted to see him. I remember walking home, letting my books fall to my father, fall beside my father's feet, me looking in his eyes and telling him that this is not the life that I wanted, that this is not the life that I chosen for me. And I remember my father looking away and then looking back at me and telling me that he would choose me all over again if he could. Because a long time ago when I was up high flying with the clouds in the sky, when I could see the course of rivers and the trajectory of mountains, I saw a man and a woman walking in a war unknown to the rest of the world, walking without shoes, with hunger in their bellies, and I chose to come down to them. My father said that life was going to teach me the strength of the human heart, not of its weakness or fragility. And I'm here today because of those words. 437 East Stewart taught me how to dream. I'm a kid from the refugee camps of Thailand, from the projects of St. Paul. I grew up right down the block. And today, I have one of the best education that money can buy. Today, I'm invited into spaces like this and given a microphone to strengthen the shaking in my voice so that I can speak on behalf of this thing that we are all working toward. 
All of us in this, in this tent, all of us on these streets, we all came from somewhere to call this place home. The English we speak were built on accents not so different from my mom and my dad's or Gajwa's. And we sit here, we're together only because we put our feet on the same piece of earth and we know we're connected to this thing that pulls people from all over the world to share in the, the making of a dream. So I want, I'm here because I want to support the work you do. Because I believe that the work that you do enables lives like mine, enables voices like mine. I am not a voice for my people. I have a voice because of them. And my people are, my, of course, my family, but it is also the men and the women who look and work in the kind of work that you work in. I wouldn't be here if not for the public libraries, if not for the men and the women who taught me. Came to America with A, B, and C. Took me 22 years to develop a voice in America. Because when I was seven, we were at Kmart, and my mom wanted light bulbs. But she didn't have the word. She asked for the thing that made the world shiny, and the clerk walked away. And I decided if the world didn't need to hear my mom and dad, then it didn't need to hear me. Two and a half years ago, I started speaking again when the book came out. Because we live once, because we all make mistakes, but the mistakes that we make tomorrow cannot delete the work that we do today. And today, you're all doing phenomenal work. You're going to build a house without lead. So that, so that a three-year-old, a five-year-old little girl can know the difference between an F, a five, and a G, and a three. You're going to build a house that is strong enough to shelter dreams. So that this thing we call America can continue inspiring. And I want to thank you for the bottom of my heart for being here, for doing work that we all need. And I have to say, I want to thank Karen Ross Haven for holding a school up the hill and bringing her students here to learn what it means like to be a part of a community that cares. Because it takes teachers, it takes leaders like that for any community to stand, for the, for the generations to come to walk toward that happy ending that we were all waiting for. Thank you so much.